I'm here to uh, introduce uh, Steve Wade and Gavin McNair, who are going to talk about our journey, their journey, in building a self-service platform. Welcome, Steve and Gavin. Hi, pleasure to be here. Hi there. Brilliant. Well, the stage is yours. Okay, so we're here this morning to spend the next 15 minutes talking to you about how we um, created a self-service platform for um, the company Metal. So my name is Steve Wade. I'm an independent consultant and trainer, and I was, I'm actually the ex-platform lead at Metal. And I'm Gavin McNair. I'm also an ex-platform engineer at Metal. So... Metal is a venture backed by NatWest Bank and offers business digital banking to its customers in the form of a mobile application. It follows in the footsteps of Monzo and Starling, who've adopted modern patterns and approaches for infrastructure. So before we talk about the journey, it's, a, it's good to look um, at the past and you know where we've come from. So before we went to a GitOps pattern and a GitOps paradigm, um, a lot of time was spent creating stuff manually for developers. So things like secrets, Kafka topics, um, infrastructure, and even databases. And the platform team were seen as blockers in innovation, right? And we needed to become enablers because um, at the end of the day, the, um, the developers are the platform team's customers. So our relationship with the developers was very poor. Um, and we had a lot of frequent failures um, all over the place because of um, click ops. So essentially what we've done is we've taken Metal on a journey um, with the rest of the team from click ops to GitOps. So GitOps is a pattern where we can declaratively express infrastructure as code and have it magically applied to the Kubernetes cluster. Um, creating manifests and putting them into Git for Flux is easy. But what about when they don't work? Um, we initially got workloads running really, really easily. Um, but once you use Git and GitOps by its very nature, CI becomes an obvious way of doing our validation and PRs become the clear approval and org audit mechanism, especially when you combine it with things like code owners. So here are some examples of our pipelines. We store everything in Git and use Circle CI for our automated testing. KubeVal allows us to validate man the manifests against the upstream Kubernetes JSON schemas. And we run this against all Helm charts and all manifests in our GitOp repositories and use strict mode so that we don't add fields that do not exist. However, we're running KubeVal against manifests and we're deploying Helm releases. So why don't we run KubeVal against the output of what the Helm releases will deploy? And that's exactly what HRVal does. So here is our Helm release definition. Uh, the tool downloads a chart, a specific version, and it runs a Helm template using the specified values. Uh, finally, we run kubeval against the output, and uh, there's a link below showing the GitHub, GitHub action that will add this output to, uh, to a PR. A uh, shout out to Stefan Prodan for write, writing the action. Uh, as a bonus, since we've rendered the chart, we can also use conf tests, which is part of the open policy agent. Now, everyone knows that Kubernetes loves to deprecate APIs, and I expect that everybody remembers the 116 release. When we update, updated a test cluster to 116, all hell broke loose. We had to retroactively fix all the manifests and update to the new API versions. Uh, we wanted to put this into CI so the manifest didn't have the same issue in the future. Um, we also started running policies to check for cube, future cube deprecations up to and including 120. So proactive is good, right? Uh, it runs on all Helm chart changes and against all GitOps repositories. So policies are defined in the Rego language defined in the open policy agent. And here is an example where we check for the deprecated V1 beta 1 API version in a number of resources and alert the user before it ever gets to cube. To execute it, we run the command shown, and for more information, look at the links below. So at Metal, we are heavy users of Customize, 
and all clusters track the master branch with a directory per environment. And you can see from the diagram that a change to the base customization because it's um, because all the others inherit would would make changes to all environments, and this makes the blast radius for pull requests very large. When performing code reviews, you want to know what changes are going to be applied to clusters. You know, it's Git. We know the information is there, so we wrote a tool to help us. The tool runs customized against the PR branch for each environment directory. It then runs customize against the master branch for each environment directory, which represents our current running state. And then it performs a git diff, which shows the differences that will be applied once the PR is merged. So Ben, ha ben Hartley, who is in the platform team, wrote a GitHub action for this, and it runs the steps previously mentioned and creates a PR comment containing the diffs for approvers to read. It's publicly available and linked below, so feel free to give it a go. Here's an example of the output. You can see in this case, it's adding an extra value to the controller, which is setting the uh, admission webhooks enabled to false. So that's a way that we're providing stabilizers when we're making Kubernetes-based changes or manifest changes. But how do we actually deliver value to our customers? How do we ship microservice changes? So as Gavin has already alluded to, we are heavy users of Customize. So Customize works by having a base. And when you think of base, think of it as all of the um, kind of config that you require without the environment specific um, pieces. Then you apply a patch um, for, as an example, this is the dev patch. The dev patch is gonna add the dev specific configuration. And there's two kind of um, areas of this that I wanna call out. The first one is the annotation on the Helm release. This is going to tell Flux to start looking for new images um, in the uh, repository that for um, that specific image with a tag prefix that matches this. So, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that the dev patch is tracking the dev branch or the dev tags. You can probably work out what staging is going to do. And then finally, we have the, the dev tag here. So let's assume that was already deployed to the Kubernetes cluster, right? And now it's time for the developers to actually make changes. So as Gavin's already alluded to, we store everything in GitHub. They leverage concourse here rather than um, Circle CI for their, um, for their microservice pipelines. They perform a Docker build. They tag that Docker build um, with the dev dash commit SHA. We use the long commit SHA and kind of hope and pray that we don't get a clash. We push that up to our image registry, which is um, GCR. Then we know that Flux has the ability to be able to poll for new images. So it finds the new image that's in our image registry, dev dash one, two, three, four. It patches the Helm release locally to the Flux pod applies those changes to the Kubernetes cluster itself, and then finally commits those changes back to Git. Meanwhile, whilst that's all happening out of band, we, had a, we have a job that's um, waiting for an update. And this is a bash script that wraps kubectl and is essentially running read-only commands against the cluster to validate that the deployment is there and also um, that we are ready to move on to the next stage. The next stage in the pipeline is testing. This is where the developers focus the majority of their time and it provides them um, with the confidence to move on to the next environment. So how do they move on to the next environment? Well, they just re-tag the existing image with a new tag, starting with the STG prefix rather than the DEG prefix. So that's how we ship microservice changes um, through the environments. Then for us to go to other environments, it's essentially rinse and repeat, where we just um, re-tag and make sure that we set the environment prefix correctly. Here's an example of stage. You can see that the differences between dev and staging are simply the glob that we are looking for. So this is great, right? We started to onboard a couple of mission teams. We got a couple of Helm releases deployed. Everything was golden. And then kind of this happened. So this was a developer that kept coming to me and saying, Steve, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm deploying changes and that this wait for update script that you helped us create keeps timing out. What on earth is taking so long? You said GitOps was the greatest thing ever and it's going to make our lives easier. And now I'm sitting here not delivering features to my customers. The issue that we had is we had a central Helm operator 
and it was looking after a number of Helm releases. And let's say for, um, for the sake that that cycle time took around five minutes. And then we added some more and it took 10 minutes. And then we added even more and it took 15 minutes. Right. And what ended up happening was this. All the devs looked like this. Right? They were all waiting for their features. Remember, the platform team's customers is the developers. If the developers are not happy, the platform team aren't delivering value. So what we moved to is a Helm operator per namespace. And that Helm operator is responsible for the Helm releases in the namespace where they are being deployed. So more Helm operators, but more tightly scoped to its namespace means less things to worry about, faster cycle time, happier developers. Here is an example of a Helm release that deploys a Helm operator. You can see here that this is for the default namespace. And the two fields that you really want to look at here is the target namespace, which is um, where we want it to land. Um, and then the allow namespace um, as part of the Helm release, sorry, the Helm operator, which is telling this Helm operator to work within that namespace. So this Helm operator is only going to be looking at Helm releases within the default namespace. Boom, easy, right? Just add more of the things. As well as that, Flux was also starting to take a little bit of time to reconcile because we had so many things, so many manifests in, um, in our GitOps repository. So kind of do a shout out here to Stefan Prodan at Weave, who actually told me about this additional flag, which excludes resources that um, Flux doesn't need to worry about. So we removed some of these from Flux. Um, a prime example of this is we had a Flux for sealed secrets, which Gavin's going to come on to later. There is no point in Flux looking at anything else other than sealed secrets. So we were excluded a load of resources, which means the Flux cycle time is even faster. So now we have Flux reconciling configura configuration into Kubernetes, and we can declaratively resolve anything that Kubernetes understands uh, by default. Cube has a fairly basic set of functionality, things like stateful sets, daemon sets, secrets, etc. So what happens when we want to go beyond these basic controllers? Um, many people will already have custom operators when they use things like the Helm operator. Um, other operators that we used were the Bitnami sealed secrets and the Istio operator. And installing these is as simple as applying the Helm release and um, for, for the operator microservice and also adding the um, custom resource de definition of, or CRD, which is a YAML schema that descri describes how things, how the resource in cube will look. But what happens when there is no resource handler for the thing that you actually need? Uh, we should avoid having to make manual changes, especially when audit or privilege es es escalation may be required. And as previously mentioned, we expect all self-service changes to have linting and validation via CI. So what do you do when you want to self-serve a resource type which no one has created an operator for? Uh, we encountered this problem for Kafka topics, which we were creating manually. And our solution was to create a Kafka operator which would take care of it for us. So in this particular case, we had a Kafka topic repo which contained Kafka topic definitions. And developers just needed to add a YAML file to the repo to add the topic. We used CI to ensure that they set sensible configuration options to maintain consistence, consistency. And these were written as Rego policies. They checked that all expected fields were present and valid, and there were not duplicate resources or topics with the same name. Every 30 seconds, Flux would reconcile these, and the operator itself would do the heavy, heavy lifting and create the topic in Kafka for us. So here's an example of what the developers needed to add in order to create a topic. Um, and it's that simple. So we use Cube Builder to bootstrap our operators, and it created the skeleton of code for us. And all that's left to do is fill in the actions for the appropriate types, things like add, delete, modify, et cetera. And it usually is um, just a matter of using the target API of the thing that you're, that you're using. Um, so it's, it's essentially just glue, nothing more. And then we make sure we have loaded that CRD and launched the microservice. And, uh, and that's, that's all you have to do. It's very, very simple. You, you can probably do it in an hour or so. Uh, we also worked with the um, security team to uh, create an operator to add rules for our WAF. 
uh, we wanted the security team to actually own the pipeline in CI so that they would be the code owners responsible for adding linting and validation checks, and most importantly, to audit rule changes in case somebody submits a PR, for instance, which stops all traffic from coming into the website. Obviously, that wouldn't be great. Um, so the marriage of GitOps and operators is pretty much all you need to manage any kind of resource in Cube. So did it work? Right. Did what we built actually add value and deliver the self-service um, message that we that we told the business? So I'm going to kind of leave you to read this quote for yourself. But essentially, it boils down to now the developers have the ability to create any resource that they want, whether that be a Kafka topic, whether that be a new secret or whether that be um, onboarding a new microservice. And it leaves the developers um, to kind of fend for themselves and also allows the platform team to focus and concentrate on improving the platform further. And the consistency and approach means onboarding new microservices becomes very easy, as you can see from here. So again, the developers love the platform, right? We did it, we delivered the message and they, you know, they can now innovate for our customers. So everybody loves some numbers. So I just kind of want to throw some out here. So in the last month, um, the, the team at Metal have um, performed 418 releases to production, 104 of those um, on average per week. And across all environments in the last week, they've done 807 um, releases. And I think the real kind of benefit from this was they're all, they're all recorded in Git, right? We've got a audit trail of all those changes that have ever been made. So when an auditor comes in and wants to audit us, we just show them the Git commit history and they can see all the changes that have been applied. So how did management find this? So management basically said, well, that'll work, right? You've delivered the promise. We can ship hundreds of features per week to, to our customers. Um, that, that's great, right? You've delivered your promise. So that's all we have for you. Um, I'll kind of leave this on the screen. Essentially a couple of links at the top there for some example repositories and the GitHub action. And then we've actually blogged about this in a lot more detail on, on Medium. So Gavin and I will be back um, a little bit later for the Q&A, so feel free to ask your questions then. Steve, Gavin, appreciate the talk. We, we uh always get a great deal of insight from 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 you and your team so thanks for just being open and sharing and so just active uh in the community no problem